Yankees baseball is on the air tonight from the Richmond County Bank ballpark on the north shore of Staten Island. It's the Staten Island Yankees against the New Jersey Cardinals. The Staten Island Yankees in first place and to reinforce that issue, Derek Shelton, the manager of the team, talked to his team. They're going to run. All right, they want to run. That's a major part of their game. Last night we picked two guys off. We're going to have to do a good job at second base with you guys keeping them close. If you see something, you pitcher see something you do not like, and there's no flash move, step off. All right? Don't let these guys continue to creep. When you steal second base, the biggest key is what? Continue to move. If we get them to stop, that's what we're looking to do. The other thing is when they're at first base, we got to differentiate our looks. All right? Come set. Even if you don't have a called pick, come set, hold go maybe the next time you come set boom and go but it's got to be a different look because they're trying to time you and a majority of them are on their own so there's going to be no sign or the sign will not matter all right so how you differ uh, differentiate your looks and make sure that uh, we're giving different looks for going and make sure you get them to stop at second base when you come to the Richmond County Bank ballpark to see the Baby Bombers, this is what you see. And I defy anybody to point out a more panoramic view from any ballpark in the major leagues or the minor leagues. You can keep McCovey Cove. That is the greatest city in the world. Hi, everybody. I'm Ed Randall, pleased and proud to be calling the play-by-play -play of tonight's ball game between the Staten Island Yankees and the New Jersey Cardinals. The Yankees are hot right now. They've won five straight, 12 out of their last 15. They're 17 and 6 in the month of August. And right now, they stand atop the McNamara division of the New York Penn League, even though they are tightly bunched. The Williamsport Crosscutters, which are owned by the Pittsburgh Pirates, just one game behind, and the Brooklyn Cyclones, the defending champions, only four and a half games behind the Staten Island Yankees. There are 191 games that have been won at the Major League level in this booth tonight, and my broadcast partner, David Cohn, won them all. Welcome back. Great to have you. Tell me, if you will, with 10 games to go now for the Staten Island Yankees, about the pressure of a pennant race. Well, it is important. It's important not only to the players, but to the manager and the coaches as well who are trying to move up the ladder. But I do remember the, the most recent pennant race in 1995 when the Yankees were going for the wild card, trying to get Don Mattingly into the postseason for the first time, and how stressful that can be for everybody. It, not only was it stressful, you guys really wanted him to have a taste of postseason play. Well, we really did. I think everybody knew that that was Donnie, Donnie Baseball's year, and we all sort of felt that that was the theme of that team, to try to get him into the postseason. And I know it, it's similar on this level as well. I know these kids are probably going through the pennant race for the first time on a professional level, and uh, they're learning a lot right now. And believe me, it means a lot when you can win a pennant early in your career in the minor leagues and, and sort of get ready for the major league level. What stands out about that 95 pennant race for you? Well, the last series of the year, I remember Pat Kelly hitting a big home run uh, to sort of save us on Saturday from going to the last day of the season and having to win that game. And I was scheduled to pitch that last game, so I was thankful because I was able to start the first game of the playoffs against Seattle. And people who are Yankee fans were so grateful to see the ball club make it into the postseason. And they will always remember Jim Lairitz's home run in the 15th inning in the rain at Yankee Stadium. And then you giving it your all in Seattle. That's uh, one, of, one of those games you never forget, Eddie. You know, a lot of times you remember those tough losses more than you remember the great wins, and that's one of those ones that I'll always remember and uh, one of the toughest losses and the saddest, most uh, depressed clubhouses I've ever been in after a game. But yet that started the run, and in 1996, David Cohn, a member of the world champion New York Yankees. It's the New Jersey Cardinals against the Staten Island Yankees coming up here on the Yes Network, and we're glad to have you that is the Staten Island Ferry, 
which arrives here just beside the ballpark, no more than a five-minute walk. It is a great way for those of you on, as the Islanders out here call it, the mainland, to come to the ballpark. And not only that, it's free. Dave, you grew up in Kansas City, and you came to New York for the first time when you played for the Mets, and you saw this for the first time in person, not on TV. Well, yes, that's true. I, th this is just remarkable here. Uh, you know, as a minor league, former minor league ball player, I've never played in a stadium like this on a minor league level, and uh, I, I don't really think the players realize how lucky they are to have this type of atmosphere and this type of facility. <laughs> we were joking about that with the uh, Cardinals manager, Tommy Shields, before the game. You never had anything, anything like this. Let us reference for you those uniforms, uh, the tie-dyed uniforms, are being worn specially tonight by the Staten Island Yankees uh, to raise money for the Make-A-Wish Foundation. And the Make-A-Wish Foundation winner uh, of tonight's auction will come from uh, Staten, will go to a child living in uh, Staten Island. David Cohn was kind enough to don one of those uniform tops and Ladies he and will autograph you know, season, that uniform top that you see him. On the yes Network, and we've been so honored to have this next gentleman here with us for four of them. On July 18th, 1999, he reached New York Yankees immortality by throwing a perfect game. Tonight, he is here with us. He is wearing a Stars and Stripes jersey that will be up for auction to benefit the Make-A-Wish Foundation. He is wearing his New York Yankees number 36. He is David Cohn. That pitch has got to be blocked. <laughs> <laughs> got to blame it on the catcher. You've thrown a few in the dirt. And he gave you a little bit of the business. Well, it was the shoes. Well, you can't get hurt with a pitch down there, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, you can't. As per custom here on Staten Island, Little Leaguers from around the island accompanying the starting lineup out onto the field. And momentarily, as the New Jersey Cardinals come out onto the field, we will have the playing of our national anthem. Please welcome Laura Lambert. Oh, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hail as the twilight last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the peril of fight. Oh, the ramparts we walked were so gallantly streaming. And the rocket struck a light above us still in The national anthem here at the Richmond County Bank Ballpark. We have a wonderful crowd on hand for this 5 o'clock start between the New Jersey Cardinals and the Staten Island Yankees. And this is the Cardinals lineup for you tonight. The shortstop is Kyle Boyer. Batting second is the right fielder, Justin Woodrow. Reed Gorecki in center field. John Sandor, a terrific ball player at first base. Bats cleanup. Travis Hansen is the third baseman. Tyler Parker, the DH. Jeff Talati out left. Clinton Chauncey, a former Yankee, is catching. Tyler Durham is the second baseman. The pitcher is the right-hander, Brian Flynn, in the lineup card, signed by the Cardinals manager, Tommy Shields. 
and this is the defense that that Cardinal offense will face. At first base, it is Jason Drobiak. The second baseman, Robinson Cano. You haven't seen him on the Yes Network so far. We'll be telling you about him. Ferdin Tejeda is at shortstop. Williams Vasquez is around at third. In the outfield, left to right, Bronson Sardinia in left. Kevin Thompson in seven. In center, Matt Carson in right. The catcher is Tommy Rojas. And the pitcher from Taiwan is Jin Ming Wang, who is making his 12th start of the season. He is second on the team in innings pitched with that 66 in the third innings. He is third in strikeouts. He's given up 20 runs, only 13 earned on 53 hits, and he earned the win in his last outing on August 19th against Oneonta, a 5-0 shutout. And here's his pitching coach, Neil Allen, to talk about him. Uh, pitching for us today will be the young man from Taiwan, Jin Ming Wang. He'll be throwing a fastball, curveball, slider, change, and split finger. Uh, he's got a lot of confidence of all of his pitches right now, and he throws them all at any time in the count, and he's having a lot of success for us, so we hope that he'll continue. He has terrific mechanics, as you'll see in a moment, Dave, uh, and a very disciplined player. And Jin Ming Wang making his second appearance for us on the Yes Network, and we are so happy to have you with us wherever you may be watching. And Jin Ming Wang, second in the league in earned run average, and the league is hitting only 217 against him. And look at that Staten Island uh, lineup of pitchers among the ERA leaders. Staten Island collectively 2.66, and that is best in the league. Here's the first pitch of the ball game, and Kyle Boyer foul tips him with the glove of the catcher, Tommy Rojas, for strike one. The umpires for tonight's ball game, and we use only two in the New York Penn League. Steve Cummings is at home plate, and Jason Dunn will get a workout on the bases. Had it past him, and the count is no balls and two strikes. Well, you can already hear a little zip on that fastball up here, Eddie. We've got the window open up here, and you can tell he's got a nice, easy motion and what we like to call easy gas. The ball just jumps out of his hand. That's what we thought about you on the first pitch of the game. Here's the go-to pitch. It is in there for a called strike three. On three pitches, Kyle Boyer is retired as Chin Ming Wang takes care of business. Well, he's got a really nice delivery, Eddie. You can see he really sets himself over the rubber well and just really tries to throw an 0-2 pitch off the corner there with good movement and got the call. Here is Justin Woodrow, the right fielder. Justin in very limited service this year with 11 for 66. And this is a fly ball to left field. Sardinia will put it away for the second out. So two men out. Boy, Dave, you know, when you get started like that, a strikeout on three pitches and a fly ball on the first pitch. Boy. Mm. Yeah, four pitches and two outs. That's a pitcher's delight right there. And uh, he's looking to, uh, to bury this third hitter and uh, have a quick first inning. Two men out, nobody on for the brain trust of the Staten Island Yankees and... Uh, Derek Shelton, the manager on your left. Neil Allen, the pitching coach on your right. And they have done a terrific job as the team has rallied late in the season coming in, having won 12 out of their last 15. They are 17 and six in the month of August. Reed Gorecki, the center fielder, terrific speed and good power, good combination. And that pitch is in there for a strike. It is no balls and one strike. Reed with 44 RBIs on the year, as you see, also has 21 stolen bases, and that's second best in the league. Where is it? No balls and two strikes. Tell us as we look, Dave, at the beginning of this ball game now, with, with the batter in the shadows and the pitcher out in the sunlight. No, but I didn't know. But that is really the uh, the thing that pitchers love to see is uh, when you're throwing from sunlight into the shadows is the toughest way for a hitter to pick up the ball as opposed to vice versa. And uh, this is going to be a tough first inning to see the ball. This is hit on the ground, past the shortstop Tahita, and out into left field for a base hit. Bronson Sardinia down to one knee to return it, and turning and holding with the first hit of the ball game is the center fielder for the Cardinals, Reed Gorecki. Here is one of the most talented players in the New York Penn League in the year 2002, John Santor, the first baseman. He's in the top 10 in batting average at 308, 21 doubles. One triple, 13 homers, and 57 RBIs. And the 57 RBIs represents the top spot among all hitters in the New York Penn League. And Tommy Shields Day was talking about the fact that this kid's going to go places. 
Yeah, he really did. He thought he was really a prospect. And uh, when you asked him the question, Eddie, before the game, which guys, uh, what's the number one prospect on your team? He, he jumped, at, jumped with this name, John Santor, and uh, he's a guy to look for. So John Santor, there's Tommy Shields, who played in the major leagues briefly in 92 for Baltimore. What do you say, eight, eight days? <laughs> eight it's days that with short, Baltimore. You remember. That's the proverbial cup of coffee right there. Yes, Eddie. it eight is. Days with Baltimore. I think he said he had two months with the Cubs as well. And uh, that was in the following year in 1993. And that is in there for a strike. And there's no balls in one strike. And Wang so far has not thrown a pitch out of the strike zone. Shields has served in the Orioles organization as a manager for three years. Left there, scouted with the Cardinals and doesn't live that far from Skylands Park where the Cardinals have their home games, so the organization asked him if he would mind taking on the additional duties of being a manager for the short season, and he, and he said he, he, did, he would be happy to do so because he's uh, close to home, which uh, he was not able to be when he was in the organ organization of the Baltimore Orioles. Remember that uh, Garicki has 21 stolen bases and this is something, Dave, that uh, in our opening montage, Derek Shelton was talking to the entire team about the fact that this team will run. Very true. I, I think that was the scouting report coming in. Uh, uh, you saw Derek Shelton talk about uh, pitchers holding the runners closely, varying the deliveries, and we've seen four straight throws over there. And uh, at this point, maybe a bit, bit, of, bit of overkill, but you can tell that these kids were listening in that meeting. Look at those numbers of John Santor. This is a guy that uh, Jin Ming Wang has to be extremely careful with. Working very deliberately with Santor. With the uh, Santor at the plate, the runner goes to throw to second base. The Rojas throw is in time. Jason Dunn falling out. Reed Gorecki attempting to steal his 22nd base of the year, and the side is retired. Tommy Rojas throwing it right over the bag to retire the side. So the Cardinals are out in the first inning, and the first place Staten Island Yankees are coming up to bat. Looking for excitement, thrills, action? Why not cruise to the island? Staten Island. Yes, yeah, the Staten Island Yankees. Baby Bombers on their way up. Just a quick trip from Manhattan. Take the ferry to the ballpark at St. George, right there on the water. It's like a mini vacation, Yankee style. Get up close to the players and the action. Just watch out for those nasty cyclones. The Staten Island Yankees, real baseball, real close. Property owners. Well, after, after four straight throws to first base and the meeting Derek Shelton had before the game, uh, we don't really see a particular slide step, but uh, we don't see a particular good jump as well. But uh, upon the throw here, it looks like he might have snuck his hand in. Good call, Dave. Looks like he got his hand in there, but uh, undoubtedly the, the four throws to first gave, gave the catcher a chance to throw him out. It was a bang-bang play. Could have gone either way. The Staten Island lineup tonight against the Cardinals. Kevin Thompson in center field. Robinson Cano at second base. Bronson Sardinia in left. Omir Santos, the DH. Jason Drobiak first. Matt Carson in right. Tommy Rojas catches. Williams Vasquez at third. Ferdin Tejeda is the shortstop. The pitcher is Jin Ming Wang, and the lineup card signed by manager Derek Shelton. And here is the Cardinals defense for you. John Santor at first, Tyler Durham at second, Kyle Boyer at third, Travis Hansen at third, Jeff Talati in left, Reed Gorecki in center, and out in uh, uh, right field, it is, uh, it is jo Justin Woodrow. The catcher is Clinton Chauncey, and the pitcher is right-hander Brian Flynn, facing Kevin Thompson who has come back to Staten Island this year and really provided a spark. Ground ball shortstop, Kyle Boyer with the throw across in time, and Kevin Thompson is retired. And this is the guy, Dave, who's really been jump-starting the Staten Island offense the last few weeks. Yeah, we've heard all year long where Staten Island's kind of been driven by their pitching. We've, saw, we've seen the three uh, starters that are in the top five in ERA, but uh, the offense has been the one that's really sort of been the catalyst lately and uh, kind of led the way on this recent winning streak. Robinson Cano played here on Staten Island last year, and he has rejoined the ball club. He played on Derek Shelton's uh, Gulf Coast League Championship last year, played in Greensboro earlier this year, 
where he was hitting 276 with 131 hits. And he watches the strike. Robinson, since coming back, hitting 333 and 42 at bats, 14 for 42 with four doubles, a homer, and seven RBIs. And that is low, and it is one ball and one strike. It's one thing, Dave, they're not only getting on base, but they're also providing great speed at the top of the lineup. Well, that makes a big difference, Eddie, obviously, uh, when you can get on base and do some things, and especially in this league. And in the A-ball league, you don't hit a lot of home runs. You're going to need to manufacture runs, and you need that speed at the top of the order. Flynn two running, and this is toward the left field line. Coming quickly is Jeff Talati to make the catch, and there are two men out. That will bring to the plate in the bottom of the first inning Bronson Sardinia who is a supplemental number one draft choice of the Yankees last year, the 34th player chosen overall. He is 6'1", 195 pounds, and Sardinia has just played terrifically well for the Staten Island Yankees since joining them about a month ago. He is the highest drafted player ever out of the state of Hawaii. And uh, it comes by the name Bronson. He's named after his mother's favorite actor, Charles Bronson. He bats with two outs and no on. Get on the ground to the second baseman, pulling the ball to Tyler Durham on the first, and a very impressive first inning for Brian Flynn. The Yankees go quickly in the first, and after one full inning of play here at the Richmond County Bank Ballpark, we are scoreless Cardinals and... That's not live. That's a you and that's Dave and me before the game, just warming up. Oh, and that's our other shift. Just doing a little fishing before the game. <laughs> Tonight at 8, join Michael K as he sits down for an hour of conversation with 49er great Steve Young on center stage. Hear his thoughts on his career, his retirement, and one of his greatest embarrassments. You don't want to miss it when Steve Young takes on center stage. Tonight at 8, right here on Yes. You were interviewed by for the center stage, right? I was, indeed I was. Chris Ebert and I did a doubleheader uh, the other day with Michael Kay, and uh, you'll be seeing that uh, shortly in the future on Yes. We go to the top half of the second inning of a scoreless ball game, and John Santor will be back at bat. He was at the plate in the top half of the first inning when Gorecki was caught stealing. It'll be Santer, Travis Hansen, the right fielder, and the designated hitter, Tyler Parker. And boy, you couldn't ask for a better, a better condition for Jin Ming Wang to be pitching. The weather is just absolutely perfect. I want, I want to ask you about, about that uh, after this pitch. Good pitch right there by Wang. It is 0-2 to Santor. Hottest place you ever pitched? Hottest place was St. Louis, uh, Missouri, uh, with the AstroTurf at Old Bush Memorial mm -hmm. Stadium. Uh, there was just no wind. It kind of sits down in a tunnel in a pit. And uh, the, the, luckily, nowadays, they have regular grass. But back when they had AstroTurf, it was just, just miserable, especially during the day. John Santor stays alive with no balls and two strikes. And coming up through the Kansas City system, George Gretton, all those guys had to deal with the carpet in Kansas City, where I can remember they would have little temperature gauges, and you'd see 120, 130. Man. You would, and it was literally that hot. I would see Frank White, the former second baseman for the Royals, come in in between innings and, and soak his feet in a bucket of ice. Sure. And his, his rubber spikes would almost melt on days like that on, on that type of turf. Santor, the league leader in RBIs, awaits the 0-2-er. Hey. Coldest place you ever pitched? San Francisco during the summer, without a doubt. Uh, you, you would have you would have guys wearing parkas in the dugout in the middle of July and August uh, and night games in, in, at Candlestick Park. You can't believe what you watch when you see Pac Bell, right? Between the weather conditions and, and, and the crowds, and boy, it's like the Giants moved. The one-two. This is a fly ball to center, center field, and Kevin Thompson is right there for the out, and there's one man out. It, it, the difference in San Francisco, who would imagine? Just a, just a matter of moving over to the China Basin on the other side of the bay really made a huge difference. Um, you know, it's hard to figure San Francisco, you know, the, 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 uh, the, coldest, the coldest winter you ever spent was the summer in San Francisco, <laughs> as they say, and I can vouch for that. I can tell you in 1989, covering the World Series, 
and the weather was like this. It was just perfect. Here is Travis Hansen, the third baseman, facing Jin Ming Wang here with one out in the top half of the second inning. First two games in Oakland, weather's perfect. Monday, they're working out. Weather's perfect. Tuesday, the earthquake. One ball and one strike. And I remember talking to Faye Vincent, who at the time, of course, was the commissioner. You know how he used to ride around in the golf cart? You know, and I went up to him, and I, this was on Monday during the workout at, at Candlestick, and I said, you know, the weather's just perfect. Is there some way you think you can extend the series? I swear, that's what I said to him. And then the next day, oh, boy. one one -er. Down the left field line, moving over is Sardinia. It is going to be caught just in front of the warning track, and he looked like he had some problems with that ball out there. Yeah, the ball carried a little more than I think he thought it was going to. We have a we have a light wind blowing out the left, but not like we've seen in the past here. Yeah, it looked like he got a pretty good beat on it, but uh, he, he thought he was closer to the wall there. He took a peek and then kind of pulled up, and uh, the ball carried on him a little bit. Bronson Sardinia, a, a recent import to left field, and there you see the wind conditions here at the Richmond County Bank ballpark. Bronson, formerly a shortstop. This is Tyler Parker, the designated hitter and Drobiak will have a play and makes the catch and the side is retired. And just like that, Jin Ming Wang with a very impressive second inning. Cardinals are gone in order in the second. Yankees coming up. Here at the Richmond County Bank Ballpark on a beautiful night for baseball. The Cardinals and Yankees getting ready for the bottom half of the second inning. And those two ladies that we are pushing in on are twins celebrating their 50th birthday in the striped blouse, Margaret Watton and Sue Holmes. They are from London, England, celebrating their 50th birthday. Sue was in the U.S. two months ago, attended a Staten Island game, loved it so much, she wanted her sister to see a game on this trip. And this is Margaret's second baseball game. Her first was 25 years ago in Yankee Stadium against the Boston Red Sox. We welcome them. We welcome the thousands of others that are attending with them and all of you watching along the Yes Network as Omir Santos faces Brian Flynn and the count to him quickly is no balls and two strikes. Talk if you will Dave about the importance of strike one. Well we've seen both starting pitchers really get out of the gates quickly tonight. Uh, strike throwing machines. Uh, one of the first breaking balls we've seen right there from Flynn had pretty good action on it but uh, yeah especially in this league uh, when, when you have to manufacture runs and you're not worried about home runs as much uh, you know strike one Establishing your fastball is so important. The count to Omir Santos at the plate is two balls and two strikes. The Staten Island Yankees in the season series have played five games against the Cardinals and they've won three. Retreating on it is Hanson and Talati. Will they have a play? Not quite. Jeff making a nice effort from left field, reaching in. And the count to Santos at the plate, two balls and two strikes. Yankees have won three games. The Cardinals have won two games as Brian Flynn tries to get them even in the season series. And Brian's number is okay. This is only his second start of the year. You see that he's been in 16 ball games, but manager Tommy Shields taking him out of the bullpen and giving him some starts late in the season. And the count is out cold to Omir Santos at three balls and two strikes. What's amazing about the Yankees leading the season series three games to two is that they are hitting just 192 against Cardinals pitching. Payoff pitch. Popped up in the short center field, going out the second baseman in shortstop. They both call, and it is the second baseman, Tyler Durham, to make the catch to retire Omir Santos. And there is one man out. We see the importance day in and day out of defense and about communication on defense, and here's a perfect example. Yeah, with a little bit of a high sky, too, and the sun's still out uh, on a 5 o'clock start, and a really good communication there. Second baseman took charge, and uh, you know, the center fielder really probably should have made that play, but it was a nice play by the second baseman there. Jason Drobiak, as you see, just this beautiful ballpark and a beautiful day for baseball, and he goes up the alley, deep left center field, and it's going to go off the bottom of the wall and Jason Drobiak is going to steam into second base with a double as Reed Gorecki returns the ball. And that is the first hit tonight for the Staten Island Yankees. Well, you can see Flynn here is trying to go away, just gets it up and out over the plate. And really a nice piece of hit. And uh, Drobiak really drove that ball in the gap. And this is a big ballpark, as you see the 389 sign. And that, 
That's a legitimate big league gapper right there, and uh, really a nice piece of hitting to go the other way. 389 up the alley in left center field here with the Richmond County ballpark, and 390 to straightaway center field, less than 400. And yet, it's a pitcher's league. It is rare when we see a home run. It, it's true. Uh, those are some some big league dimensions, some some power alleys. Uh, right field's a little shorter at 364 in the right center gap, but that that's a long way to left center. Matt Carson is up, and the count to him is no balls and, and one strike. They are talking, I don't know if you've heard about this, in San Diego where they're erecting the new park for 2004. They're talking about a center field fence less than 400 feet away, 398. That's the trend nowadays. Um, you know, like obviously all the ballparks that we've seen come into play in the last five years are being built smaller, and the excitement and home runs and runs are the, are the issue of the day. Carson. No balls and two strikes to him. Do I sound like a bitter old pitcher? <laughs> <laughs> they don't give the pitchers a break. I want, I want to build the mounds back up to 15 inches, back to the Bob Gibson days. There right you now. go. There is Bill Campbell, the great relief pitcher for the New Jersey Cardinals and having a great career with Minnesota and the Cardinals and the Red Sox. And that is in there for a call strike three. And Matt Carson is gone. And that is a big out recorded by pitcher Brian Flynn his first strike out of the game. We get a look here at, at, at Flynn's really uh, first good breaking ball. It looked like a front door, what we call a front door breaking ball that starts off the inside corner and kind of catches just, just the inner half of the plate. And uh, you're looking for kind of a freeze job there. And I'm not sure if that's what he was trying to do with that pitch, but it was pretty effective in that situation. Bill Campbell. Look at the bottom one. 17 wins, all in relief for the Minnesota Twins. There's a story behind that that is amazing because he was at the vanguard of free agency when free agency began in the mid to late 70s. And the story is this. If you did not sign a contract at that time, the club had the opportunity, the option to renew your contract unilaterally, which they did. Campbell was making, I believe it was $23,000 for the Minnesota Twins, and Calvin Griffith, the owner then of the Twins, who they say used to throw nickels around like they were manhole covers, renewed his contract. He played, I believe, for $17,000 or $18,000, $17,500 that year, won 17 games, and then moved on to the Boston Red Sox. That is a single by Tommy Rojas to score Jason Drobiak from second base, and the Staten Island Yankees now lead in this ball game and lead Brian Flynn by the score of one to nothing. This looks like a really nice, really nice piece of hitting right here. Uh, ball down and away, it looks like. Sinker down and away, and really a, a nice piece of hitting. And a tough break for Flynn, the pitcher. Uh, just one of those seeing eye ground balls. Uh, probably hopped about seven times, but. But uh, you have to give credit. Uh, he was shooting for the hole there, and, and he got the job done. And with a right-handed hitter, shading over, right? Exactly. Be, you know, if he's, not, if he's not there, he might have a shot at that ball. Yeah. So Tommy Rojas is at first base with his 17th RBI of the year, and here is Williams Vasquez. Swinging and missing at a Flynn offering, and the count, no balls and one strike. So Bill Campbell plays out his option, if you will, with Minnesota, has free agency, signs with the Boston Red Sox for, I believe at the time, something like $2.9 million from 17500 Boy, you talk about a walk-away performance in a, in, a, in a year in which free agency beckoned. The side is retired as Vasquez hits into the fielder's choice, but the stat...